This video is not intended for children. I am an adult doll collector and I'm making this video for other adult doll collectors or anybody who is considering buying these dolls as a gift for somebody else. Please ignore my facial hair. I'm in the process of regrowing out my beard. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I have something really exciting. I have a box. I know the box doesn't look very exciting. However, you probably saw the thumbnail already and you know what's in that box. So this box is from shopdisney.com and I'm gonna open it. So let's open it together. <laughs> okay, so I need to move this over here so it's out of the way. Okay, so I just decided to move over here to my bed just because I have a lot more space to film. I have not opened this box yet, and I have not looked at the dolls inside, so this is going to be my first impressions, first experience, whatever you want to call it. Whenever you get a box from Shop Disney, the first thing that you always get is like this really pretty tissue paper that has a whole bunch of Disney characters on it. Here, let me turn the camera so now you can actually see right side up all of the characters. You've got like the Genie and Mickey and Mike Wazowski and Squish and, or Squirt, not Squish, Pinocchio, Tinkerbell, the Little Mermaid, you know, there's so many and like Elsa, Snow White, um, I don't even know. Leave comments if you notice anybody who I didn't mention. All right, so this is my first impressions. You're seeing it with me. <gasps> oh my God! Okay, so I had to order these online because my Disney store is closed right now, but uh, so I couldn't pick them out and like compare them, but oh my gosh, the Wendy doll is so pretty. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, let's see who else we got. So, okay, we got Meg. Oh, and there's Esmeralda down there. But here's Meg. Oh, they captured her character so well. So here's Esmeralda. Oh, she's so beautiful. So I also got Alice. This was the main reason that I order everything because I have an Alice in Wonderland collection and I promised you guys I would show it to you. Um, it is up there, so there's a sneak peek, but um, I'll do my Alice in Wonderland collection video more in depth later on. But, oh, I'm so happy. I want to get a second one to keep one in the box and keep one out of the box. Also, from the new ones, I got Tinkerbell and... She is really pretty. I wanted a Tinkerbell with more articulation in the arms because the one that I have from Disneyland, she bends at the elbow, but not the wrists. This one has like full, pretty much full articulation like a Disney store classic doll has. And then I also got Charlotte. I did not already have a Lottie doll, so I ordered one since I was already placing an order and um, I wanted to get all the different characters. And then... I did also order some masks. These are the Disneyland, like, I don't know what you would call them. Like this one right here on top is the Haunted Mansion wallpaper. And there's a few other ones that are like images from Disneyland. So I'll show you these here also. All right, so here's everything that I got in my order together. The only regret that I have for like ordering on Shop Disney is the fact that the box was all like smashed and my Tinkerbell box as well as my Charlotte box are kind of damaged. I mean, it's okay because I do plan on taking these out of the box to review anyway. The other thing I would have liked to be able to do is see all of the different options for the different dolls in store and like pick the one that had the best hair and the best face paint. Because if I look right here on Alice, her left eye right here kind of looks a little red underneath. I don't know. And then Tinkerbell's hair is not the greatest. But you know what? I really can't complain because overall, all of these dolls look amazing. And just I'm really excited to add them to my collection. Plus, if I really want to, I mean, I can always customize that Alice and, you know, make her look a little bit more elaborate and repaint the face if I want to. So I'm really not too worried about it. But anyway, that's enough talking about them. I'm really excited. Let's get these dolls out of the box so we can take a closer look. Hey, I'm back. It is a completely different day. <laughs> um, so the day that I opened up the box with all these dolls and everything, um, right after I filmed the um, first like little review that I did for the masks, some things came up. So um, I ended up going over to my parents' house and I just 
completely forgot to film the rest of this, and then um, I just got really busy over the next couple days, which is kind of weird. So now I'm here about a week later. I have had a chance to um, wear some of the masks out in public, going shopping and stuff like that, so I'm going to give you guys a little bit more in-depth review later on. But for now, let's talk about the dolls, because I know that's what you're here for. <laughs> okay, so I was trying to decide if I wanted to do these all in separate videos, um, or if I just wanted to do them all in one. I think I'm just going to get it all done in one video, um, just because there's not like it a whole lot to each doll. It's not like um, some of the LOLs and Hair Amazings that have like surprises and stuff that you have to open. So I think I'm just going to go through them each one at a time. I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time on each individual doll, but I will show you like their box and um, the doll and tell you what I think about them individually. So trying to decide what order I want to do these in, um, it, I guess it doesn't really matter, but I do want to start off with my favorite. So here's Alice. <laughs> So for the most part, each of the boxes are pretty much the same. They're all the same shape. You can see the doll very clearly in it. Um, down at the bottom, you have the name of the character and the movie they're from. And then there's some artwork that kind of wraps around the side. On the back, it has the same information. And then it also has a scene from the movie. And then across the bottom, there's like silhouettes of different characters from the movies. So here's Alice out of the box. I love her face. This is the most movie accurate doll of Alice that I think I have seen as far as like when it comes to looking like the classic animated film. There's a lot of details I really like about this doll. Uh, there's a couple things that they missed or that I thought they could have done better. She has this like glittery blue dress and she does have her uh, apron. The apron is attached to the back of the dress here. So like if you do take the dress off, it's all, you know, one piece. Um, it is also tacked down with, in fact, there we go. I hate it when clothing, doll clothing is like pinned to itself, especially with this material, because now you can kind of see there's like a hole in the fabric, but whatever, that's fine. She has these weird curls that come up, and I think they were trying to kind of like replicate the way her hair is in the movie, but like, I don't really like that. I'm just going to make these curls kind of come back and join the rest of the hair. But yeah, I'm so excited to have an actual Disney store brand doll. Um, I don't know who makes the Disney Store dolls. I don't think that they, like, are a toy-making company. I think they contract somebody else out to make them. But it's definitely not Mattel or Hasbro or anybody like that. Um, but they always have such amazing quality. Um, I say amazing compared to, like, Barbie Fashionistas and, and what Hasbro currently has. This is so much better quality. Now, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but these dolls were each $16.99 at the Disney store. Um, I bought each of these dolls on the Shop Disney website, well, through the Shop Disney app. That's how I ended up ordering them. At the bottom of her skirt, she does have this lace detail, which I do like and I do appreciate this. Um, she does not have the multiple layers because in the movie, she was definitely wearing a petticoat and um, most iterations of the doll and even like the walk around character in the park um, does have a petticoat. Uh, she also, most of the older dolls have bloomers and like white leggings or tights uh, and this doll doesn't have anything. She doesn't have any like tights at least. Usually that would be a minimum but she is bare legged and I mean it's not the end of the world honestly at the end of the day but I would have liked to see the white stockings or white leggings, just something to, you know, kind of complete that look. I will say that the Disney store has definitely upped their game for the, um, the quality of the articulation and like even the posability, like look at the range of movement for the head and it, she is giving me no resistance whatsoever. And she's able to look up and down. It's super nice. I also really like these shoes. These are the, actually the same like molded shoes that the collector Alice in Wonderland doll has. Uh, the one that was like a set with the Red Queen. So it's the same molds that they used for these cute little Mary Janes. Also, even though her shoes are flat, she does kind of have like the pointed toe. Um, I don't know how well I can see it because I don't want to take the rubber band off. But um, she has more of like the pointed toe uh, feet. She doesn't have the flat feet like the taller dolls have. Overall, I'm in love with this doll. I'm a little biased because it is Alice. The one thing is that 
her eye. Now, this is getting super, super picky, but this is what you do when you're doll hunting. Like, you look and you compare the different dolls. The face paint overall is really, really good, but this eye right here seems to be just a little pink at the bottom. It's hard to, like, explain it, but it almost looks like her eye is a little bloodshot, whereas, like, on this side, the eye looks fine. So little tiny things like that are what I look at when I'm trying to find a doll for my collection. But overall, I really, really like this doll. I'm really happy with her. The next doll that I want to show you is Wendy. Uh, the main reason I wanted to look at Wendy next is just because there has been some, like, controversy, not controversy, but, like, um, people are debating about the Wendy doll and the Alice doll and, um, you know, discussing whether or not they have the same face mold or not. So I want to take a look at that. So here's Wendy in her box. Um, up here, I didn't show it on Alice, but uh, up here is the little Disney logo, and that's the same for all of the dolls. Just like on the other boxes, of course, you have the name of the movie and the character. And then on the back, you have a scene from the movie, as well as some silhouettes down at the bottom of of the box. Now each of the dolls that have a dress have like all this tissue paper kind of like stuffed under their dress to make it look floofier. It's like it'd be nice if they just made a petticoat. <laughs> just get a, a nice little crinlin down there. But um this glitter is getting everywhere. Why did they do this? Why? Oh it's everywhere. I've got glitter literally everywhere right now. It's all over my shirt. So here is Wendy. Wendy Moira Angela Darling. Now here's her face. I think she is so pretty. Um, one thing that a lot of people were wondering is if Alice and Wendy have the same face mold, and they definitely do. When you put these two side by side, you can very clearly see that they do have the same face mold. Like if you put them nose to nose and everything, their profile and everything. It definitely is. It's just in a slightly different skin tone, but they just have a completely different face paint. And obviously hair changes a face a lot. But somebody else did already do a video comparing these two and they did remove all of the factory face paint. And it's very clear that the face mold is actually the same on both of these. If you wanna see that video, I'm gonna put a link to it down below. So Wendy is pretty simple. She's got her hair pulled up into this little ponytail with all of the ringlets back here. I actually really like this hairstyle. Um, and she's got this cute little bow. The bow is not all the way around. It's like just attached to a clear rubber band or not a clear one. It's actually like the color of her hair. But um, anyway, so the bow is just on top. Um, the hair does keep wanting to kind of like go off to the side because of the way it was in the box. Um, I think I could probably train it. Like if I r rinse out the, the product that's in the hair holding this in, I could probably get it to stay more like that. There we go. That's actually not too bad. Um, she has this belt that's made from a blue ribbon. It is attached, so it's all one piece. And she does have lace details around the neckline and at the bottom hemline of her dress. Wendy is wearing these little ballet flats, like these little blue ballet flats. Once again, you can kind of see her, her toes are more pointed. She doesn't have the fully flat feet. You know, for such a simple doll, I actually really like the amount of details that they put into her. Um, I think that the character's design is fairly simple, so they're, they didn't have to do a whole lot to achieve that, and I think they did a good job. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but these are the classic dolls, which means, I'm hoping, means that they are going to be part of the classic doll lineup going forward, and it's not just going to be the Disney princesses, but um, I don't know. I didn't really do a whole lot of research on the information about the dolls. I was just too excited to get the dolls, get them open, and play with them. So anyway, here is Esmeralda. I love this Esmeralda doll. I mean, you'll see more once I get her out of the box and there's no glare. But um, I actually like her better than the original one from the 90s, I think. Just like the rest, you've got the name of the movie here. So Hunchback of Notre Dame, Esmeralda. On the back here is the scene from the movie that they decided to use, as well as the silhouettes back here. She doesn't have a whole lot of characters. It's just her. That's interesting. And then it's got like a lot of the, the architecture and stuff like that. But you would think that they would have put like... Quasimodo and um, her, what her, what's her little goat's name? I forgot the goat's name. Uh, her, her little pet. Um, leave a comment down below if you know what the goat's name is. So we've got Esmeralda. By the way, the hair quality on these dolls is, I would say, is good. It's not like 
anywhere near Hair Amazing or OMG dolls, but it is definitely better quality than some of the Disney dolls in, that have had in the past. Now, I really, really like the way this doll looks. I think that her face is extremely movie accurate, which is part of the reason why I really like the Disney Store dolls versus the Hasbro ones or the Mattel ones. Also, I think that Esmeralda got like supreme treatment when it came to the details. She has her headband. Granted, it is just simply a single uh, ribbon that goes around her head and is tied in a knot right here, but it still gets the job done. She does have her single earring, uh, and then she does have like all of her bangles, uh, and she does have a bracelet on this side as well as her anklet. Um, I think they were able to do all of those details because she is barefoot and they didn't need to do shoes. The dress itself is pretty movie accurate as far as like the look and the design of it. What I will say is, you know, comparing to the older doll from the 90s, um, the dress material is like this newer like kind of satiny kind of fabric that you're seeing a lot of these dolls have nowadays. The original one had a lot nicer material. Uh, I think it was like a higher quality and it had a little stretch to it and a very nice drape to it. Um, but you know, the look is here. Um, you've got this little sash that she wears. Um, it's a little too far forward and it is kind of pinned in place. Once again, I don't like it when these little plastic stays. See that? I don't like that. I think they do it for display purposes in the box because they want the doll to look nice. I mean, obviously they, they want the doll to catch the attention of the people who have the money. But I mean, really, it literally pokes a hole through the fabric. Um, anyway, oh, it's also done up here. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. So I was able to detach this little darker purple sash from the rest of the skirt. On the original doll, it did actually have little coins hanging off it. Instead of doing that, they just have this kind of like ribbon that has these little circular metallic threads that kind of come down that, you know, they kind of look like the, the coins and everything. But I mean, obviously it's not quite as nice a quality as the one from back in the 90s. Now, the sash is not tied together or anything. It is held together by these little plastic stays. So if you cut those off, obviously you won't be able to just put this sash back on. I mean, honestly, let's be real, I'm probably not gonna take it off. She's gonna be more for display than for play. So um, I might as well just leave it, but I don't know, I, I'll do something with it probably. Overall, I'm kind of critical of this doll only because I was able to see the original one back in the 90s and I'm kind of comparing it to a completely different time when, you know, Mattel put a lot more detail into dolls. Um, obviously, we're living in a world of Barbie fashionistas and, um, you know, like everything else that, uh, you know, poor hair quality choices sometimes and stuff. So that, like keeping that in mind, I'm actually really happy with this doll. So I don't want to complain too much about it. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm just... I want to praise the doll because I think that um, they did a really, really good job and she looks so pretty. I'm just really happy to have her and I'm really happy that she's been added to the lineup. Hopefully this means that we're going to be getting more characters that aren't just Disney princesses. The next doll I was actually really excited for because I've always wanted to have one and I never did have a doll of this character. So we've got Meg and I think that she turned out amazing. Once again, I think I actually like her better than the original dolls back in the 90s. Like with Esmeralda, I'm not 100% sure, but with Meg, absolutely. Uh, I definitely like this doll better than the old Meg dolls. I just think it looks a lot more like her from the movie. So down here you can see it is Megra from the movie Hercules. You've got some scenery from the movie, the Hercules statue there. Then you've got this scene on the back here where she is trying to wring out her hair when she was thrown in the water. Uh, it's the scene with the centaur and everything. I love this little picture of Pegasus here. And then you've got Phil looking really excited for some reason. <laughs> and then of course down here you've got the little silhouettes just like all the rest of the boxes. So here is Meg. Um, she, oh, she, I forgot. Also happens to have all this um, tissue paper um, attached here, or not attached, but stuffed under her dress to make it look poofier. She doesn't need a poofy dress. Um, Meg didn't really have a poofy dress. Hers was a lot more slender. It was a lot more Grecian. I mean, obviously, because <laughs> um, Hercules. Once again, completely covered in glitter. I don't know why they did this. I think just the glitter catches people's attention and they're like, ooh, sparkly. So that's why they probably put, you know, that on the shelf. Esmeralda doesn't have glitter though. What does everybody else have glitter? 
<laughs> Esmeralda has just normal material. I appreciate that, but everybody else is completely covered with glitter, and it's not even done well because the glitter is like, li it's literally coming off and getting all over my desk. I can say with 100% certainty that I love this doll so much more than the Meg dolls from back in the 90s. I think that they captured the design of the character so much better in this doll. Her face looks a lot more movie accurate. Also, I really like the hair. The hair is a decent quality, and I love long ponytails on dolls. It's one of my favorite hairstyles. This style is one of my favorite hairstyles, which is why I wanted a Meg doll back in the day when I was a kid. Um, I I just never was able to get one. Moving down to her dress, I think they did a good job on the dress, other than the Really, it's the glitter. The glitter is what I don't like. But um, I think that the dresses from the dolls in the 90s just happen to be so much more detailed. So I can't, I, I gotta stop comparing it to that because it's a completely different time and a completely different idea. Uh, there was a lot more details back then, but I mean, even though this isn't like up to the full caliber of the 90s dolls, I think that they did a really good job because I mean, like they have these little like bronze colored details right here at the top. She's got the ruffle around her neckline, you know, all the piping with all the ribbons and everything and like the sash around her waist, uh, which by the way, the sash is uh, permanently attached. Oh, it, it's pinned down again. Hold on, be right back. All right, I'm back. So this is what I'm talking about. I hate when they tack this down to the dress because look, now it has, it literally has two holes and like a fold line where it was attached to the dress. Oh, and back here too, where it was attached to the box. Okay, I mean, that's a little better. I do really like this little medallion here, you know, with the swirl. That's definitely very Hercules to me. And then I love that they gave her her sandals. And so far, both Esmeralda and Meg both have the flat feet. I'm actually okay with it because it works for both of their characters. Meg is wearing like Greek sandals and Esmeralda is barefoot and as they're walking around their to toes would not be pointed so it definitely makes sense. I do prefer the dolls when they have like the pointed toes so they can wear high heels or whatever um, but that's just a personal preference. I think that this is more appropriate for the character. Oh also I don't know if I pointed out but she does have this gold band in her hair. Um, it looks like it is held on by Velcro. Um, so she does have a rubber band underneath here to hold up the ponytail. And then this gold band is just as a decorative detail. Now for not being able to see these dolls in person and pick them out myself, I think I lucked out pretty good when it comes to their face paint. I think both of these dolls look phenomenal. I think their face paint is perfect. Next is one of the newer dolls that not a lot of people are getting, just because there have been other dolls recently of this character, but I decided to get the Tinkerbell doll just because I really like her and uh, I wanted a Disney Store classic doll of Tinkerbell, um, especially since they have more articulation in their arms and their wrists and everything. I do have another Tinkerbell doll that I got from Disneyland. Um, I'll get her down in a little bit and we can actually compare the two and see which one I like better. So here's Tinkerbell in the box. Um, this is a prime example of why I prefer to find the dolls in store in person, um, just because I can take a look at the doll and see if there's any defects or anything. Her eyes kind of look a little googly eyed for me, like um, they don't both look like they're looking in the same direction. Uh, and that's just because of the paint and the catch light and everything is kind of wonky. Um, it's not terrible by any means, but um, I would rather have picked one out that um, I liked the paint job a little bit more. Um, also, her hair looks a little smushed and a little weird, and I might have been able to find a doll with better hair. But luckily, these are things that actually I can very easily fix. So right here, you can see it is Tinkerbell from Peter Pan. On the back, you have this scene from the movie. And then of course you have the silhouette here. It's the city of London with everybody flying over it. It's interesting how they have like two characters from one movie in this lineup. That's interesting. <laughs> so here is Tinkerbell. Now, after I made that comment of her eyes looking a little bit wonky, I looked at them and right now in person, she doesn't look that bad. Like it, it's really weird because when it's a mirror image in my little viewfinder here, it makes her eyes literally look wonky. And I don't know if it's just because of the way I have the lights or what, but they're really not bad. <laughs> like. Her face actually looks really pretty. For me, I think the main thing was the hair, and the hair is actually definitely fixable. So here's her dress. 
Um, I really like this metallic material that they use for her bodice. And then, of course, they have little leaves for her skirt. Once again, completely covered in glitter. No, it's not glitter. This time it's pixie dust. I'll accept it for this one. <laughs> but anyway, she's got like an underskirt layer with an iridescent material. Um, I just think that's really pretty. I, overall, I really, really like her dress. I think that it's very, very Tinkerbell. It's very pixie and I totally love this. She does have these wings. These are like kind of like a, a nice sturdy plastic and they're a light blue color. I think in the movie her wings were kind of tinted blue. No, nah, maybe they were just white. I don't know. But um, I think that they're an appropriate color. I, I think that it kind of rounds out her color scheme very well. The wings are attached to her dress. So like if you were to take her dress off, um, that's basically what it looks like, which makes sense. I've seen many other uh, Tinkerbell dolls where the wings were either like on straps over the outfit or they were like attached in a different way and I like this a lot more mainly because I'm a doll customizer so um, if I have a doll like this and I want a customizer I don't want these wings necessarily to be permanently attached and even my other Tinkerbell doll which I'm going to show you here in a little bit um, she has her wings are permanently attached so I actually like this a lot more. As far as articulation goes, she has pretty much the same articulation as all of the rest of the dolls with one exception. Um, of course, she has like the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist. Uh, she has the bend and snap knees, which I really like. But the one thing that she does have different is she does actually have a bit of articulation like in the waist right here. So she can actually turn at the waist and kind of slightly move forward and backward. You can kind of see it back here a little bit better. So she does, it does kind of stick and it clicks. So I don't, I hope that's not breaking. <laughs> I think it's like meant to like click in place. But um, yeah, she has really good posability just like the rest, even like her head. And I'm just really impressed with the range of motion that these Disney dolls are giving me. All right, so I mentioned I wanted to show you my other Tinkerbell doll to compare. So this is the other Tinkerbell that I have. This one I got at the Disneyland Resort. I don't know if it was exclusive to the Disney parks or if it was just a Disney store doll. If you know like which version of Tinkerbell this was and if they sold it at the normal Disney store, leave a comment down below and let me know. But um, I really like this Tinkerbell. I think she's super cute. I love that her wings have the glitter on them. Her dress is practically identical, but they just use a different material for the bodice and the underskirt. And she doesn't have the same amount of articulation. Um, she can bend in the elbows, but there is no wrist articulation, which is why I really like this Tinkerbell better. Um, also, on the back here, you can kind of see she's got this button and her wings are permanently attached. And when you push the button, her wings move like that. So... I just like the fact that her wings are not permanently attached. Last but certainly not least is not a doll from this newer lineup. It's actually Charlotte from The Princess and the Frog. Um, I decided to include her in this video mainly because she was part of the initial package and the initial order. Um, just, But also, she's not a typical Disney princess. She's not one of the characters that you normally see in that lineup. And um, I haven't seen a whole lot of dolls of Charlotte, um, and I did not have her already. She has the same box shape, but the way that the artwork is done and everything is the older style. So down here it just simply says um, Charlotte, and then it says Princess and the Frog here. And then on the back you have a silhouette of Tiana, but then you have this beautiful artwork of Charlotte. I think she looks so pretty right here, and I actually really want to repaint her face because the doll looks a little crazy. I mean, it's appropriate for her. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but I kind of want to repaint her face to look more like this with her eyes a little bit more closed and a little more seductive. Um, I, I really like that. Um, one thing I will say right off the bat is I'm kind of disappointed. The dress is so wah wah. <laughs> like in, in the movie, she had this gigantic ball gown and it went out. I mean, like, I understand why they didn't do it for here. So I'm not like super complaining because obviously that would make the doll more expensive, but um, makes me a little sad. Um, although I have seen some people do some amazing things with these dresses. So even though it's very cylindrical, um, people have like sliced it and like added fabric to it to give it that volume. I might do that because I kind of want her to have that gigantic over the top beautiful ball gown dress that I, that I know she has. Um, so I might end up doing that. All right, so enough criticizing this doll. Let's take a look at the hair closer. Ooh, her hair. Oh, her hair is a really nice quality. 
it, it's a little different because her hair is styled. It's very similar to Cinderella, but there's no product in it whatsoever. Every single one of these other dolls has like gel up in their hair and it's, it's crunchy at the ends. Her hair is really nice. It's really smooth. Uh, and I think this is from last year, whereas the rest of these dolls are from this year. Okay, so up close, her eyes are really wide open, you know, like she's really intensely staring at what something she wants, <laughs> or she's just really surprised, like, <gasps> <laughs> So yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of repainting her just because I want to kind of give her that, that, you know, slightly closed eye. Oh, I don't know if I can do that though, just because the face mold is there and the eyes and even the eyeliner is molded. So I don't know, I'll, I'll think about it. But anyway, I mean, I still think that this is appropriate for the character and she is still really cute. Up here, she has this beautiful little tiara that has like a heart design in it. I really like that. Um, she also has earrings. I don't think any of the other dolls in this video have earrings. So she does have these cute little like silver drop earrings. She doesn't really have any other jewelry or any other accessories though. But let's go ahead and take a look at her dress. Now, I know I was kind of complaining about the size of it. The volume on the bottom is a little bit lackluster or a little underwhelming, but um, that's okay. I think that they still captured the idea. I really like her little collar because she definitely had a collar in the movie. And I think it's doing a good job at staying up on its own. I really like the little puff sleeves that they did here. Like I said, I think the details, um, they captured the idea of the dress pretty well for what they were trying to do. And then right here in the front, she's got a big bow. Um, not sure how I feel about the bow. It kind of looks, oh, this one's tacked down too. <clears throat> Hold on. I mean, I know, like I said, I know why they do it. They do it for display purposes in the box, but there we go. Let the ribbons be free. Now, one thing I'm not too excited about is um, Lottie does have flat feet, uh, just because I think a lot of the Disney princess dolls from last year and I think the year before were, the Disney store was just in the mode of like, they all need flat feet for whatever reason. Um, I don't like the flat feet. Like I said, it makes sense for Esmeralda and Meg but I'm not a fan of it for a doll like this, or a character like this, who very clearly had high heels and would never wear slippers with a ball gown. And I'm not talking about glass slippers like Cinderella. I'm talking about like, these literally look like ballet slippers. I mean, it is what it is. Um, and maybe later on I'll like rebody her with a doll that does have the high heels. Cause I do have some pink heels that I think would match this dress perfectly. But for now, I mean, whatever. I'm, I'm just happy to have her in my collection. I think she's really pretty. Her hair is really nice quality. It's a shame that it's permanently up in this little bun because I don't really want to take it out because it looks so nice, but it is a really nice quality hair. And even though the dress isn't like super movie accurate, as far as like the volume goes, you know, th like I said before, it they did what they could with, you know, the budget and everything. And they did a good job keeping this as a $16 doll. Okay, so let's move on to the masks. Now, I started this review on, back on the day that I started filming this whole video, so let's rewind back then to see what I thought about the masks then. Anyway, so let me go ahead and open these. Now, these are cloth masks, yeah, cloth face masks, and they are in different patterns that you would see at the parks. Now, I got the extra large size because I have a big head. But um, here's the first one, and it looks like the um, Haunted Mansion uh, wallpaper that you see, and it's all black and purple. Perfect for Halloween time, so just in time. Um, it does come with a tag inside. I might take that out, because I have a feeling that would get really annoying to wear. But um, anyway, let me go ahead and try this on. Oh, this is nice. This literally fits me perfectly. And it's comfortable. I have other cloth masks, but when I wear them, they're like really tight on my, they're tight on my nose. Just cause I think that like, they're probably a little bit too small. These are literally the perfect size for me. And that looks so cool. Oh my God, I really like these. Okay, I can't wait. Let me try the next one. So the next one is themed after Tomorrowland. It's got like Space Mountain right here. And then um, you've got like the people movers and then like the, the, um, Astro Orb Orbiters, and I think that's the ride vehicle for Space Mountain right there. 
um, and then that looks like a little planet there and stuff like that. It's just like a whole bunch of different things um, that are space themed and everything. So it's definitely a Tomorrowland mask. Yeah, once again, this literally fits my face perfectly. And honestly, the tag, it, it's not that big of a deal, but the tag does like every time I breathe in, if my mouth is open, the tag wants to go in my mouth. Other than that, I don't really feel it. So it's not really a problem. This is actually pretty comfortable to wear. It is pulling on my ears a little bit back here. So like, as far as like the strap around the ears, that feels like a little bit small, but I feel like I could probably stretch that out. The mask itself though is really comfortable and it is double layered. So like on the inside here, there is a layer of white fabric here. So the next one is inspired by It's a Small World and it says hello. I love that because when you're wearing a mask, people can't see when you're smiling and stuff like that. But I love that the mask itself says hello. And it's got a little penguin there. I am so happy that it has a little penguin. I love penguins. Oh, it's got the little hippo. One of the, I think there's more than one hippo on the ride. It, correct me if I'm wrong. But they have the little hippo from the It's a Small World ride. That is so cute. Once again, literally a perfect fit. I love that when I put it on, all of a sudden you can actually read this. Because it is like squished when I'm just holding it up. But anyway... Hello. <laughs> okay, so last but not least, and probably one of my favorite ones from this uh, pack of four is the Tiki Room. It's got all of the birds from the Tiki Room on here. Jose, Michael, Pierre, and Fritz. I know their names, but I don't know which one is which. Um, I just think that that's really cool. Let me go ahead and try this one on. Ach, tu lieber, I almost found out of my upper perch. Wait, wait, we forgot to wake up the Glee Club. I have really bad accent impressions, but here we go. So this is, oh, I love it so much. I love the Tiki Room. Oh my God, this, yeah, the tag's gotta go. I'm gonna have to remove the tag because every time I'm talking and I breathe in, then it tries to go in my mouth and strangle me. But anyway, yeah, so I, I love this. This is so cool. Now, of course, these are not the only masks that you're able to get on shopdisney.com. There are other packs. They come in packs of four. Um, I know that at the park, you can buy them individually and they'll do like four for $20 or something like that. In fact, I think that's how much this was, was $20 for the pack of four on shopdisney.com. They do come in several different sizes. So you can get them in like a child size, small or medium and like an adult size, large or extra large. I got the adult size extra large just because I have a big head, but, um, um, obviously, they have different choices depending on what it is you need. Okay, so now that I've had a chance to try these masks out in public while I'm running around doing errands and stuff like that, um, I love these masks. I can absolutely see myself wearing these at the parks, um, especially since right now they are requiring masks or face coverings being worn in the parks, at least the parks that are open, <laughs> and then also in downtown Disney in California. Um, but I could definitely see myself wearing this if I go to the park while they are still requiring masks. They are definitely easy to breathe in, um, especially compared to some other cloth masks that I have. My mom's a nurse, so she also had the surgical masks, like the paper ones, and for a while I preferred those because I could breathe easier in those, but they're lighter weight and they kept moving up and it like obstructed my vision and they were just annoying because I had to keep adjusting them. Did not have to do that with these. I would say that, you know, they got a little bit warm because the material is a little bit thicker, but I feel like any mask, if it's not like a one of those really thin surgical masks, any mask is going to make your face feel warm. So, and it didn't even really start feeling warm until later in the day. And I'm in California and it's been really hot. So I'm not going to like count that against them. But yeah, overall, I really like these masks. I think I'm going to be buying more of them, especially for the price, because you get four of them for $20. That's $5 each. That's, that's not a bad price for a good quality mask that I'm going to be throwing in the washing machine and reusing multiple times. Anyway, I digress. I know this video wasn't really about the masks. The, you're probably here more for the dolls, um, but I just figured I'd throw, the, throw in that review as well. Um, overall, I'm really, really happy with these dolls. I think that these are definitely a great buy. I'm so, so, so excited that Disney is adding in non-Disney princesses into the classic doll lineup. Anyway, I should probably get going. This video ended up being a little bit longer than I expected it to, but there was a lot of dolls that I wanted to show you. So if you like this video, be sure to let me know by hitting thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this and other doll reviews and other trips to Disneyland, because I have some more coming up, um, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to get a notification every time I upload. <gasps> And thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Almost knocked over my camera.